Hello, my name is Lana and I'm a research assistant at the Early Learning Project. Today, I will be presenting an article on procedural memory in infancy where evidence of implicit sequence learning was observed in an eye tracking paradigm. Procedural memory involves sequence or skill learning, which requires repeated exposure to the same pattern to learn the sequence. This type of learning is indicated by a shorter response time to the learned sequence as one is able to predict the pattern. Procedural memory and sequence learning are quite prevalent in our everyday lives, for instance, learning to ride a bike or tie one's shoelaces. The learning of new skills is largely attributed to procedural memory and sequence learning as repeated executions of a task allow us to remember how to complete said task. Similar to older children and adults, when presented with unfamiliar or unpredictable patterns, infants observe the sequence for longer periods of time since they cannot refer to any previously learned patterns. This results in an increased response time as they are unable to predict the patterns of an unfamiliar sequence. Previous studies have examined procedural memory through response time changes in motor behavior, mainly button presses, during skill learning. Previous research did not examine procedural memory in infants since they slowly develop motor control, so button presses cannot be used. However, eye movement matures quickly during the first year of life. So, in the current study, infant eye movements were tracked from one visual location to another to observe the learning of sequences, and an adult group was included for comparison. The study's participants included 35 monolingual Swedish infants with a mean age of 9.38 months. They were all healthy and typically developing with highly educated parents. And as stated before, there was an adult group included for comparison. Moving on to the setup, infants were seated on the parent's lap in front of a screen. The sequences were shown in blocks with each block showing one full sequence of infant-friendly images. The three possible screen positions consisted of the left corner, the lower left corner, the lower right corner, and the top center. The predictable sequence was shown three times during what constituted the learning phase. Then a random pattern of images was shown. After the random sequence, the predictable sequence was shown in the final block once again. Images in a sequence would appear one right after the other, and infant-friendly sounds were played between each trial to ensure the babies were focused. The results of the experiment showed that the response time for both infants and adults decreased across the first three predictable sequence blocks. When a random sequence was presented after the learning phase, the response time for both groups increased, indicating that they were unable to use their knowledge of the learned pattern. Finally, when the predictable sequence was presented again in the final block, reaction time decreased once more as both groups were able to recall their knowledge of the sequence they learned earlier to restore their response speed. These results suggest sequence learning in infants similar to that of adults. Now, why is this important? Language learning and social interaction skills are developed through sequence learning as both involve repeated exposure. We are interested in how children acquire these skills as they absorb information from the world around them, including the environment and media. By measuring the infant's response time to visual patterns, just as we did in this study, we can better observe skill learning in infants. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and for more information, please visit our website and social media.